Hi, I'm Christy Knickerbocker, and I am the founder and CEO of A Tempo Voice Center. I'm a speech language pathologist and a musician singer by trade, and I create online materials to help teach clinicians, music teachers, and humans about voice science and how to make it applicable and fun for any age. Here are three gems from the Sin City Laryngology Conference that I attended in March of 2022, where I gave two presentations. Sin City doesn't have to mean that all is bad, and what happens in Vegas certainly doesn't need to stay in Vegas. I attended the Sin City Laryngology Conference and I was able to achieve a huge life goal, not once but twice, giving presentations at the Specialty Voice Conference. This happens every year and showcases laryngologists, speech pathologists, and voice clinicians of every kind. The best thing about this conference is it takes the research and it makes it practical in its applicability with real life examples and subject matter that actually applies to what we do daily. I was able to take things back from the weekend and apply them immediately that week to my practice. Here are the top three gems. Gem number one, a red, crusty, mucousy larynx is possibly caused by bacterial laryngitis. Yes, a red larynx could be caused from multiple things, including reflux, vocal overuse, or even yeast or fungus. But 30% of the time, people could have MRSA present and be suffering from bacterial laryngitis. The vocal fold tissue could be cleared up by one, identifying it with imaging, and then treating on a trial of antibiotic like Bactrim. Special attention should be taken to rule out other causes of the red larynx, and care should be taken to not biopsy immediately. That's why working with a team with a laryngologist or ENT is really important. This was taken from Dr. Blake Simpson's presentation, The Red Larynx. Gem number two, avoid having your ego attached to your success. This is not a voice related gem specifically, but Dr. Peter Velasky gave a presentation about failing early and failing often. This presentation spoke to me not only as a voice pathologist, but as an entrepreneur at heart. One great point he made was not trying to avoid failure and not feeling down about it when you do fail. He suggested being comfortable with and even expecting failure to happen so we can learn what will work. He spoke of Edison and the light bulb. He spoke of Steve Jobs. He spoke of failing early in your career so you don't attach so much weight to the fails. When we can provide a safe space for failing for our patients, we can help breed innovation and critical thinking and decision making in our patients. Gem number three, a quick way to differentiate between two different types of spasmodic dysphonia is counting. Have your patient count from 60 to 69 and then from 80 to 89. If the patient is having more difficulty on the 60 to 69, more breathy stops with strain, consider abductor spasmodic dysphonia as the diagnosis. If your patient is having a more difficult time with the 80, 81, 82, 80 to 89 block, where they're straining and strangling to get those vowel beginning words out, consider adductor spasmodic dysphonia. It's definitely not the only diagnostic criteria you want to consider. However, it's one that's really easy to remember, especially for the MD students out there, when you have so many different things you're trying to remember as a practicing medical physician. I hope you'll consider joining me next year. It's always a fun time. I learned so much and I hope you enjoyed the three gems from Sin City Laryngology Conference 2022.